I'm standing here in the oldest part of the city, Medina, and it's a great wall. And people come here to congregate and celebrate life. I love it here. I love watching the people in the streets. Everyone is so friendly throughout the city. Smoking shisha in the cafes is a great pastime. You know, there are so many narrow walkways in the Medina, and it's a great place to meet people. Dar El Gel is one of my favorite restaurants with the best Tunisian dishes. They also have fine dining in the private area for groups. Every dish is so appetizing, colorful and fresh. This is the best food here in the Medina at Restaurant d'Argel. I love it here. A tour of the roundabout in the center of town where the political offices are located. We're here at Carthage, and this is an incredible historic site. Tell me about it. Well, Carthage was one of the most important towns of the ancient periods, and it played a very important role during the first half of the Tunisian history. It was founded in 9th century BC by the Phoenicians that came from what we call now Lebanon. And it's one of the hundreds, we can say, of the Phoenician settlements that were founded in the west of the western pole of the Mediterranean. But this town, like all the Carthaginian Empire, was destroyed during the three Punic Wars by Roman Republic. So it was destroyed and then abandoned for 100 years. And then the Romans, Roman Empire, let's say, uh, at Roman Empire period, they decided to build the Roman Carthage on ruin of the Phoenician one. And that's buried, we can say, and covered the Phoenician Carthage and a big part of it that we cannot find until now, excavating everywhere, and it's not possible for us to destroy the Roman ruins, like the monument where you see here, which is the uh, Roman bath that was built in 2nd century AD, the middle of the 2nd century AD. So it's not possible to destroy that Roman level to find out, of course, the uh, Phoenician level or the BC period in Carthage. But the same story was repeated in 5th century AD when the Roman Carthage was destroyed, this time by the Vandals. European tribes, or let's say the Viking tribes in the north of Europe, they crossed all Europe to Spain, and then they passed to Morocco, then Algeria and Tunisia, and they are the only peoples that invaded Tunisia from the west, all of them from the east or southeast. It's from the west, and they destroyed the, the, the Roman Carthage, and they lived in the same town. So it's like it was rebuilt, or some monuments that were destroyed were rebuilt. So it's the Vandals, uh, we can say, reused the Roman Carthage, but not for a long time, less than 100 years. And Tunisia was invaded again, but this time from the east, by the Byzantines coming from the east. Uh, we can say about the beginning of the 6th century AD. And now we talk about Byzantine Carthage, which was the fourth civilization, of course. And this first half of the Tunisian history ended, we can say, with the destruction of Carthage, of the Byzantine, Byzantine Carthage at the end of the 7th century AD by the Arabs. And... Carthage was destroyed, abandoned, that period, 
And obviously another town replaced Carthage in our history, the second half, we can say, a new ethnic group, new religion, new culture, Tunisia, uh, new of course, and all North Africa. It was through the Arabs, of course, and through the new town, the city of Kairawan. So when we say Carthage, actually we say, or we mean the half of our history. One of the most important attractions in, Tun in Tunis is the northern suburb called Sidi Bou Said, which is an Andalusian village founded in 17th century AD by the Andalusians, of course. Sidi Bou Said, which is famous for the Andalusian architecture, but the, especially the windows and the doors, uh, main colors of the Mediterranean, the white and the blue, that attracted actually many artists in the world, very, very interesting personalities in 19th and 20th centuries. AD, and one of them was uh, Le Baron d'Erlanger, who lived in the, um, the first half, you can say, of the 20th century. And he was fascinated by the city of Sidi Boussaid and the landscape over the Gulf that we can watch actually from the hill of Sidi Boussaid in the north of Tunis. So he decided to build this palace, but he lived here for a few years and then he left. And at the end, this palace is transformed to uh, a national museum which is exceptional when you talk about museum, it's always about history, mosaics and so on, but this is museum of music, Arabic and Mediterranean music. Of course, Arabic, it means North Africa, Mediterranean includes South Europe. We'll see inside different instruments, of course, from Tunisia, from Egypt, from uh, Algeria, that remind us, of course, the Arabic and the African music, and the Greek, the Italian and the Spanish ones. The museum overlooks the beautiful Mediterranean Sea. Sidi Bou Said is a very special place, and this is at night where we're walking through the streets and all the shops are open and ready to sell. Ah, an aerial view of Tunis at night is so spectacular. This is the Bardo Museum here in Tunis. This is where there's a treasure of incredible Roman mosaics and incredible sculpture. The Bardo Museum is a must stop on everyone's itinerary. The Grand Room is filled with Roman statues, Roman tiles and reliefs, masks, etc. The details on the tiles are so unbelievable that each tile tells a story of Roman history. You can spend hours and hours at this museum and it's a great stop destination. This is rather amusing. It's Hercules urinating. In this world of extraordinary places, extraordinary places, I'm glad there's Tunisia. Tunisia is a very special destination. It has the desert, the mountains, and the sea, and great people. We were here for the Sahara Festival in Duz, and there were camel rides, horses racing. My God, it was just, you know what I always say, that people make a difference when you travel, and I love it. Until next week, I'm John Haggins, the Globetrotter. I hope to see you then. Remember, get up, get out, and travel! <laughs> Look forward to seeing you next week at another great destination. Until then, so long for now. <laughs>